NTD, I can remove the hold here. I can buy that. So need you to put your hold switch in proceed position. Hold fire on proceed. PC GLS, can you verify? GLS verified. 15 okay. seconds remaining in our hold. Copy. Yeah, Check on the net, we'll pick up momentarily. CGLS, pick up the clock on your mark. GLS copies. Three, two, one, mark. T minus five minutes. T minus five minutes and counting. TLT, OTC, perform APU start. TLT in work. And CDI, OTC, reconfigure heaters. Copy in work. T minus four minutes, 41 seconds and counting. All systems are go and weather is green. Flight direct to entity. Houston flight entity. MTD, Houston flight. I have two seconds of drain back hold remaining. Two, two seconds. seconds. PLP, three good APUs. Copy that. Pilot Eric Bow reporting three good auxiliary power units. T minus four minutes and counting. The final helium purge of the three main engines is underway in preparation for main engine start. Go for ten minutes of MT zero. Ring status is go for launch. And what is your status? We are go. Copy. Final test of the flight control surfaces is underway. This is a pre-programmed pattern of movements designed to verify the readiness of the flight control surfaces, the elevons, speed brakes, and rudder. Minus 30 minutes and 30 seconds and counting. Final aero surface checks are complete. Discovery's three main engines will be gimbaled through a pre-programmed series of maneuvers as a final test before launch. T-minus three minutes and counting. Final pressurization of the external tank's liquid oxygen tank is underway. And we're completing purge of the shuttle main engines. TLT, OTC, clear caution and warning memory. Verify no unexpected errors. TLT in work. Non the gaseous oxygen vent hood, or beanie cap, is slowly being retracted away from the top of the external tank. Close and lock your visors and initiate O2 flow. Tap and work. Orbiter test conductor John Craxon requesting pilot Eric Bow clear the caution and warning memory system. T minus two minutes and counting. GLS is go for ET, LH2, pressurization. Liquid hydrogen replenish on the external tank is being terminated as planned. T minus one minute, 30 seconds and counting. All systems are go about 90 seconds away from the launch of Space Shuttle Discovery on her final mission. T-minus one minute, 10 seconds and counting. The liquid hydrogen tank inside the external tank is now at the proper flight pressure. T-minus one minute and counting. The ground launch sequencer will verify that the three main engines are ready to start. The booster joint heaters are being deactivated at this time. T minus 48 seconds and we're transferring to orbiter internal power. Discovery is now running on its uh, three onboard fuel cells. Coming up on a go for auto sequence start at T minus 31 seconds. GLS is go for auto sequence start. 
And we have a go for auto sequence start. Discovery's onboard computers have primary control of all the vehicle's critical functions. 20. 20 seconds. The sound suppression water system has been activated, protecting Discovery and the launch pad from acoustical energy waves. Go for main engine, go for main engine start. We have main engine start. Two, one, booster ignition, and the final liftoff of Discovery. A tribute to the dedication, hard work, and pride of America's space shuttle team. The shuttle has cleared the tower. Space shuttle now rolling over onto its back with eight and a half minute ride into orbit. Discovery now making one last reach for the stars. Maximum pressure reducing the stress on the shuttle as it goes supersonic. Discovery Houston, you are go at throttle up. <laughs> Will Commander Steve Lindsay acknowledging the call from Capcom and Charlie Hobai as Discovery's three main engines okay. throttle back up. Lindsay is joined on the flight deck by pilot Eric Bowen, mission specialist Al Drew, and Nicole Stott. Mission specialist Mike Barrett and Steve Bowen. Discovery's three main engines are burning fuel at a rate that would drain an average swimming pool in about 25 seconds. The engines combined with the solid rocket boosters produce more than 7 million pounds of thrust. One minute, 50 seconds into the flight, we're standing by for separation of the twin solid rocket boosters. Discovery now traveling 2,695 miles an hour. It's altitude 24 miles, downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, 29 miles. Booster separation confirmed. Discovery's guidance is now converging as the shuttle's onboard computers fine-tune the flight. Two minutes, 25 seconds into the flight, Discovery traveling 3,189 miles an hour. Its altitude 37 miles, downrange from the Kennedy Space Center 53 miles. Discovery now getting a boost into orbit from its twin orbital maneuvering system engines on either side of the shuttle's tail. These two engines will burn for two minutes and 32 seconds. You are two-engine TAL. Uh, we do have updates to your no-com mode boundaries, and we did launch late into pain one, our only pain. The uh, contingency aboard boundaries we'll use are in plane pl plus 230. Let me know when you're ready to copy the new Presta ATO and Presta Miko. Okay, copy all. Two-engine TAL and ready to copy. Into your Presta ATO 11.9. Presto Mico, 15.4. That's a good read back on both. Discovery can now make it to emergency landing sites in Europe should one of the engines fail, but all three engines continue to perform as expected. Capcom Charlie Hoba updating the crew there with some uh, updated uh, time information due to the later than planned launch. Three minutes and 50 seconds into the flight, the shuttle traveling 4,700 miles an hour. Discovery, you are negative return. Negative return. Discovery now traveling too high and too fast to return to the Kennedy Space Center in the event of an engine failure. But all three main engines continue to function as expected. The shuttle now traveling 5,200 miles an hour. Its altitude 62 miles, downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, 170 miles. <laughs> 